Hello, this is Ilian. In this video, we're going to take a look at the mobile website for Mesh Central. So there's an increasing use of mobile devices to access web content. And so it's increasingly important for Mesh Central and other management solutions to be able to offer a really good user experience on those devices. And so the way Mesh Central handles it is that it has its own separate portal for mobile devices. So let's take a look at the normal portal that you have. So this is what you would see if you access Mesh Central normally from a desktop computer. And Mesh Central will try to determine if you're coming from a mobile device or a desktop device and present the right portal. Now, what you can do is you can override the portal by typing uh, mobile equal one at the end of the URI with an interrogation point here. And this will override the selection of the server. And in this case, you can see that I'm on the mobile site now. And if I'm on a mobile device and I want to see the desktop portal, one option is to put mobile equals zero in the URI. Now, normally you would see this page, you know, kind of more narrow like this, and you can go up and down and use it. Uh, now, I'll go back to the desktop site and I'll show you one other option that you have to make the mobile website show up. And that is to go into the developer tools of Firefox, click on the upper right icon here for emulating a phone, in this case, an iPhone 6, 7 or 8. And I'm going to hit refresh. And here Mesh Central detected that you're coming from a mobile browser and has displayed the mobile portal. So uh, here, if we look at the mobile portal a little bit, as you scroll up and down, you'll notice that there's a little bit of lag to render. This is because Mesh Central will not render all the devices. Instead, it will leave white blanks. It will basically uh, put white blanks for all the devices here. And then as you scroll up and down, it will render the, inside those boxes of the devices that are visible. So this allows you to scroll through thousands of devices and do it much faster because the, uh, the browser doesn't have the full rendered version of all those thousands of devices. Now you also have the filter on the bottom left here. You can filter by uh, only online devices or remove that. You have a menu with my files. These are the, the server files, if you have access to that. There's my account. This is where you access things like account security, account actions. You can click here and change your uh, the image of your account. When you click on browse on most uh, on most mobile devices that have a camera, you'll be uh, presented with an option to uh, take a picture or select from an existing picture that you have in your device. And um, that's it. You can there you see your device groups here. And so you can click on the device groups you you have and change the notes, change the description right here. Um, and uh, that's pretty much it for that. Now I'm going to go back again and take a look at devices. Now, if you click on a device, you'll see that all the pages kind of look familiar. You have actions here where you can wake up a device. You can click on the device name to change the name. Click on the device icon to change the icon. Another note is, of course, the website is completely live. So just like the desktop site, so I'm going to go on the desktop site here. Uh, you'll see, let's see, where is MT15? It is don't see it right now. There it goes uh, at the bottom here. Actually, let's change it by group. There it goes. So it's at the top there. And so what I'm going to do is go on a mobile website and change the icon. And you'll see that the desktop site ch changed. And then I can go on the desktop site and change the icon. And it changes on a mobile site. So even though it's a mobile site, it is still a fully real-time website. Everything. Uh, will respond live, no need to hit the refresh button. OK, so obviously you can change tags. You have device details where you know you have your normal um, set of details about this device. Uh, there's a scroll bar here on the right, but in reality, uh, you, you would finger up and down through this content. 
the uh, console, this is the agent console. This is especially for debugging and for developers. Now, where things start getting interesting is the desktop and the terminal tab. Those two tabs on mobile work quite a bit differently than on the desktop uh, version of the website. So if you look at desktop, we can hit connect. Now, so far it looks the same, but in reality, this version here of the remote desktop is read-only. You can't, you can't change anything. You can't move the mouse on this screen. It won't work. You can change settings with the quality. You can change uh, actions, wake up, and so on. Um, but you can't interact with the device remotely from this screen. However, if you click full screen, then you're presented with something that can now interact with the remote device. So I can scroll here with my finger on the page and see this remote device. I can click on the zoom out. So there's an icon here to zoom in and out. And so then I can kind of scroll and see the entire screen. I can tap on a menu and uh, interact with this, those menus right there. I can also flip the mouse cursor. So of course you have only one finger. So if you want to right click, you switch to right click, tap, and then you have your, your right menu. And then you can flip to left again, and then you know basically tap on view or whatever you want and click on a desktop like that. Um, I won't be able to show it here, but if you click on this keyboard icon, it will allow the, it will trigger the little keyboard on the bottom of the screen to show up on a real mobile device. So, and then you can toggle up and down. Also, you can toggle special uh, custom keys. So for example, if I want to control it and delete, I can click here and the device will control it and delete. And there we go. Let's see. I'm on this here and I can like hit cancel if I want. There it goes. Or, you know, if I can, uh, for example, hit the Win key. Do I have it? Windows key. Click that and you see the menu pop up there. So you can also customize the keys. You click Customize and you're presented with a menu and you can basically pick a key, pick the modifiers, Shift, Control, Alt or Win and say Add and then it will be added to the list. And then once it's added to the list, then when you click on here, it will show you the additional uh, keys you have. So this is pretty cool. It basically allows you to remotely access a, a desktop computer from a mobile device pretty well. At any time you click the big X, it goes back to this uh, the small view only menu, and then you can disconnect, reconnect. If you have Intel AMT, hardware KVM is fully supported in this uh, viewer, and so you'll be able to access that machine and uh, do the same things that you would do on the desktop one. There is the chat on the right and also the alarm bell. This is for remote notification, so you can use those features if you want. For the terminal, same thing. I can hit connect here. I have a Windows terminal. This is input only, so I can't change anything until I go to full screen. In full screen, now I can kind of move left and right. I can tap the keyboard to show the bottom keyboard, uh, visual keyboard on mobile devices. And I also have this key that brings me a set of shortcuts. These are not customizable because these are all the shortcuts that are available for a uh, normal terminal. So you have control C, control D, control E, da da da, and everything else. So if you want to, for example, control C remotely, you tap that and you, there it goes. Or for example, I want to control, I don't know, control E and you'll see the little hat and E here. Uh, otherwise, I can type, you know, dear ls uh, of course dear minus b or you know whatever and you can kind of scroll through the terminal here and then when you're done you click x and you're back to the view only mode so this is basically the the gist of the mobile website for mesh central it doesn't allow you to manage things like managing users managing the server um, set control permissions stuff like that it doesn't allow you to do that however it should allow any user to be able to perform remote management operations pretty fully just like the desktop version but very well tailored to mobile devices hope that was great thanks very much